Hello and welcome to this, the first part in a tutorial series looking at volumetrics in RenderMan Studio. Now this is quite likely to be a longish series of tutorials because there are many different approaches which can be taken to volumetric effects in RenderMan. Using pure RenderMan and slim techniques, using um, inbuilt Maya techniques, so some of the stuff which is available through fluids and fluid containers, um, using some of the stuff with particles. Also, we can possibly have a look at compositing at some point as well. So this will be a continuing series of techniques and uh, little tips and tricks. And we're going to start off as simply as possible with an effect which we've seen previously, which is basically just giving us an environmental fog. Okay, now this will be using very, very quick, simple, kind of almost hacky kind of um, approach to this. For those of you who are interested in what atmospheric fog is, it's basically going to give us results something like this, otherwise known as atmospheric perspective, where objects in the foreground appear more saturated, and as they go towards the background, they take on the appearance of the intervening atmosphere. So they become less saturated and tend towards the blue or the color which the fog is. So it gives us a great depth cue. That's really important in any kind of 2D image to, to bring out depth. Okay, now where we get this scene file from that I'm working from, if you worked along with the previous tutorial where I did this using a different technique, using basically a shader, um, it can be obtained from the RenderMan site, which is rendermansite.pixar.com, and just do a search for fog and atmospheric effects and download the base file. So the project files will be available here. Our technique for this will be totally different from what's done in this tutorial though. So it's an alternative. It's quite a quick way of doing things. Let's just go and open up the file. File, open scene, and it should be atmosphere start. Okay, I've got a lot of experiments here, so it's atmosphere start, and don't save my changes. Okay. Let's close this down and let's just go to our outliner and view. Okay, to start with here, I'm going to get rid of the two lights which are here. I'm going to try and keep working with physically plausible shaders. So in this case, I'm going to add a physically plausible matte material for the floor. And yes, I understand I'm not linearizing any of my LUTs here. And it's something which you should probably do. So with the um, with the cogs which are in this scene, all the cogs here, I'm going to actually make a slim shader. Open up slim. Let's make a new palette just to be sure. New palette. Let's. Add an ensemble, so I'm right clicking. I'm not an ensemble, I actually just need a material here. So let's just go GP surface and for the color. I'm going to add something quite red. Close and right click, attach a surface. Okay, let's see where we are with this so far. If I go to my panels and I go to render camera, that's what I'm looking through now. Let me just make sure. Yep, and do a quick render. Let's render this. Just do an error there quickly. Here we go. So this is what it's looking like. Not bad looking, not tremendous. Okay. So we can pull this over to one side and we can leave it down there so we can actually see what's going on. There's no um, atmospheric perspective in this as yet, but we're going to put some in quite shortly. First thing I would like to do though is I'd like to actually go and select my camera. Okay, so select camera. And I'd like to put a background into the scene. So in my camera shape, I'm going to go to environment and I'm going to add a color background which will be bluish, somewhere around the blue range, and slightly less saturated than that, so it'll be okay. Let's go back to 
it turn it always on top make sure it's always on top check that and re-render okay so we're getting a background there now I'd like to put in a, a light so I get proper lights because currently we're just working with default lights in Maya so let me just go up here and what kind of light will I put in? I'll just put in area light. Let me go to panels and just perspective. Okay, I'm going to put in an area light. Um, random an area light. Let's scale this. It's in the scene at the moment, so let's scale it up. Let's move it. So it's over the scene. And let's rotate it. So that we can actually see what it's pointing at. Okay, this will change the lighting of our objects. Now, it is actually tied to the, um, the previous render viewports. So that's okay. So you can see we're getting some lighting here, some reflections, reasonably good, and some shadows. Cool, but still no atmospheric perspective. Where are you going to get this from? Okay, let's go to our window, window up here, and general editors, and go to visor. Visor is basically a list of demonstration scenes which uh, come with Maya. So I'll go to Fluid Samples and Clouds and Fog. And I'm going to go for Afternoon Clouds. Right click on this and import the file. OK. Let's see what's come in here now. Let's minimize this group here. And let's go Show All. So we'll actually see everything that's in the scene. So this was a scene which was set up to actually allow for some skies to be rendered. But there were two layers in it. There was the sky fog and the cloud layer. We don't want a cloud, but the sky fog is quite interesting. So what this is, is it's a fluid shape. Now we can have a look in a future tutorial and actually making fluid shapes and putting them into our, um, into our scenes. But we're just working this as an example straight out of the box to see how it works. So we'll go into detail on how these things work in a next tutorial. Okay, I'm going to scale this so it fills up our scene. And now let's just go back to image tool and let's go re-render. It's taking longer to render. We're getting some of the atmospheric perspective which we were looking for. So, reasonably decent result. I know it may seem a bit mysterious to you, what's going on here. It will become clear. What this shape is, what this outline here is, it's basically containing a Maya fluid, which has within that settings so we can actually change the kind of effect which we get. Now, this can be useful to us in terms of, let's just have a look through our perspective camera, or sort of through our render camera here. We actually get a certain amount of preview in our, in our viewport. The next tutorial will actually come into working with this in more detail, but let's just have a look and see how this can change our results and we can tune things quite quickly. Let's go to textures, I believe it's textures. Or actually, it's shading, I think, shading. Okay, shading, here we go. And I can change my transparency. So I can make it less transparent or more transparent. And you can see that's happening interactively in my viewport. I can also change colors and all kinds of other things here. But let's just change the transparency here so that it becomes less transparent. And if I re-render here, it'll take a couple of seconds. Again, it's going to be a significantly different. Let's go looking along there. We'll our multiple views up here. Okay, these up here. So you can see this is quite a quick way of actually tuning things. Okay, so the difference between this and this very simply achieved by changing the transparency of this fluid shape. Now, something which is worthwhile doing with any fluid shape. And we'll do this from the very start without explaining 
the depths of Maya fluids to start with, it's worthwhile adding Renderman controls to volumes. So add volume control. Here we go. This adds extra Renderman attributes at the bottom here, which can be used to help Renderman recognize what is a fluid and how it actually works. It decreases the shading rate by default. So if I do another quick render here, it should actually be slightly quicker than the previous one. And the second thing, I'm just going to actually this one while that renders. Okay, so that's rendered quite quickly. The second thing which we can change here is the depth interpolation, which if we set it to smooth, it can produce better results at times. So it's worthwhile adding the extra renderman attributes to your fluids. So this is another way which we can actually work with um, atmospheric perspective. It's a way in which we can work with fluids quite quickly in Renderman Studio. The next tutorial will look at setting up some fluids from scratch. Um, for those of you who don't have much experience using Renderman's fluids, I'd recommend going through some of the tutorials which are online, some of the tutorials which are actually with Autodesk, and trying to get used to some of the basic settings, because they're, they're involved in their own right, and we'll be looking at them purely in the way in which they interact with Renderman. Um, it'd be worthwhile for you to have a bit of a background in the general methods of working with fluids. So thanks for now. Hopefully this has been useful, um, and I'll be back shortly.